Hi, my name is Rachel, and you're watching Psych Spot. Okay, I'm not really Rachel. I'm actually Rachel's brain. Or maybe not Rachel's brain. I'm actually a cauliflower. But today we're going to be talking about the brain. And to do so, we're going to be using this cauliflower. So let's get to it. Okay, so the brain is a very large organ. I mean, it's gigantic. We use it a lot too. I mean, to do everything that we've ever done, we use our brain. But we're gonna talk about the main lobes of the brain using the cauliflower that's over there on the cutting board in the kitchen. Okay, let's get our knife. And now let's start cutting into this brain here. So here in the front of the brain, we have the frontal lobe, which is the personality of the brain. Back here is the parietal lobe, which is right behind the frontal lobe, and in the complete back of the brain, you have the occipital lobe. On the two sides, you have the temporal lobes. So I need two hands to cut up the brain because I don't want to kill myself. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Look at this delicious massacred brain. I love cauliflower. It's good. Okay, so let's start with this part, the frontal lobe. As I said before, the frontal lobe is the personality of the brain. It's everything that's you. It's the part where your primary cognitive functions are, like thinking and processing. Damage to the frontal lobe causes things like personality disorders and mood swings, but it doesn't usually cause problems that are life-threatening, which is why people like Phineas Gage can survive after getting stabbed straight through the head and up through the frontal lobe. Next we have the parietal lobe, which goes right behind the frontal lobe on the brain. The parietal lobe has a lot of visuosensual information and processing as well. In order to know where things are right in front of you, like I can tell how far the camera is from me and you can tell that, well, I'm not actually right in front of your face, but it looks as though I am. You're able to sense the distance of objects and reach out and touch it like that. That's because of your parietal lobe, and damage to the parietal lobe causes issues like running into walls and things. Maybe I have damage to my parietal lobe. That would explain a lot. Next we have the two temporal lobes, which are on the side of your heads, like your ears. But they are not your ears, they are your brain. Yeah. The temporal lobe is actually one of the more interesting ones to me, because temporal lobes have a lot of cognitive functions such as memory acquisition, emotions, everything that you do with your brain, like seeing objects and knowing that that is a video camera and um, this is a baby picture of me. Aren't I cute? Anyway. Anyway, also facial recognition. Damage to the temporal lobe causes things like agnosias and also one of the more interesting syndromes, Capgras syndrome. Capgras syndrome is when you see a person and you know who that person is, but you don't feel emotionally connected to them. So you might think, hey, you're an imposter and think that everyone you've ever met has been replaced by robots for, by the government. It sounds really funny, but it's actually a really serious disorder. Finally, the section of the brain that's in the back of your head behind the parietal and the frontal lobe is called the occipital lobe. And it's what you use to see. The occipital lobe in the back of your head is where all the information from your retinas and your eyes go and then get processed in the rest of the brain. Damage to the occipital lobe causes problems with vision, more physical problems like, you know, seeing. I see you. Finally, to talk about the two parts of the brain that I didn't cut up on the cauliflower are the cerebellum and the medulla. Medulla. Medusa. Definitely medulla. Medusa's the evil snake-haired lady who turns people to stone. The cerebellum is behind the cerebrum, which is the part of the brain we've been talking about with all the parietal, uh, parietal frontal, occipital, and temporal lobes. The cerebellum is way back there. The cerebellum is said to be a large part of balance and how we sense the world around us. It's one of the older parts of our brain. The medulla is part of the brainstem, which contains the medulla and the pons and the hindbrain. That is the part of the brain that's mostly with survival. It controls functions like breathing and sleeping and time. It is actually the oldest part of our brain. It's our lizard brain. 
but it has been shown that you can actually live without your pawns and your cerebellum because there's a boy named Chase Britton, article down in the comments in the doobly-doo description thing, that was discovered to actually not have either a cerebellum nor pawns and is surviving relatively well. Not as well as, like, someone who had most of their brain, but is actually learning, growing, walking, and doing things that technically he shouldn't be able to do without the primary parts of his brain. You want to know the other good thing about brains? They taste great with hummus. Mmm, brains. I am a zombie and I eat brains.